do have a few other hobbies other than just drawing. Although I would say drawing is most definitely my passion at the moment. But I do a lot of hobbies other than just drawing or painting. I also do poetry. I do powerlifting. I've been into arm wrestling. I thought about one time getting into uh, a form of mixed martial arts, uh, practicing jujitsu or something like that, along those lines. And I've thought about competing in strongmen. Now at the moment, I'm just really focused on doing art and creating things. And that's what I'll be doing with this channel moving forward. But I wanted to include some of my other hobbies and things that I enjoy doing. And put that on the channel to show all of you. Because part of what this channel is about is for me to get to know you, have a discussion, and for you to get to know me and to see what my hobbies are so you can understand me better and know why it is that I create what I do, why I draw, and the story of my life and where I'm going from here on. So in the video I was doing deadlifts, I did a warm-up set, 135, I always start out with that. And then after that I do a, a few reps, 225, I usually do like 10 to 12 reps, sometimes maybe 16 to warm up. Then after that I move up to 315, I do about, I would say 8 reps usually on that. Or I'm, I'll just, kind of depending on how I'm feeling, I might do 12 to 16. Um, a lot of times I'll save that at the end. So I'll do about six to eight reps, warm up with 315, and then I'll move to 405. I'll do 405 for um, maybe one to four reps. Now, if I'm wanting to go for a PR, personal record, or something that's near it, I'll do 405 for one rep as a warm up. I'll hold it at the, end, at the um, top of the rep for about 10 seconds, and then I'll set it down. Depending on how I'm feeling, then I'll try to go for a PR or work up to a higher weight from there. And I would say at the current moment, I would be okay to do 500 pounds, but I just got back into lifting again. I had um, three surgeries on my right knee, which I injured back in 2013. So I had uh, torn the hamstring, tore the ACL, uh, tore the quad. I had some fractures in my right um, leg. I had um, dislocated both of my hips. I also was at a high risk of a blood clot for about a year. And then about three years of physical therapy, I'd say. It was a lot of physical therapy I had to do to get better. And then I had to do um, just a lot of physical therapy and about, I'd say, a year or two after 2016, I continued doing exercises and stretches to get my leg back to the way it was before. I mean, it's never gonna be the way it was ever again. And now I know what I can go to. I wouldn't say limitation, Although I don't want the fear of my past injury and everything to try and prevent me from moving forward and improving in lifting. But I know to where I can, at what point I should stop when it comes to lifting. And to feel that right now I shouldn't just make the jump to try to do 500, although I know I can. But I want to play it safe and just work my way back up to that. Um, I've got a long ways to get back to how much I used to deadlift. Um, I was used to be 20 pounds more than I am now. Now I'm currently 172, and I want to try to get over 200. I've never gotten to 200 pounds. The most I've ever been was 191.4, and that was in 2013. And I was at a higher body weight, so I was able to deadlift a lot more, had more muscle mass on me. And I would say in about six weeks, I should be able to deadlift 500. So what I'll do is I'll do um, one session that's heavy, and then the next day a light, and then day off. So how I'm doing it right now is I'll do upper body, or no, I'll do lower body, upper body, day off. Lower body, upper body, and then day off. And then I'll keep repeating that. And depending on how my body feels, um, how I'm recovering, I might add in more reps or increase the weight or add in more sets. What I like to do because I'm a little bit more focused on strength rather than just, just gaining muscle because of the way that my body reacts. Whenever I do high reps of things, it doesn't really do much for me as far as muscle mass, even though I'm eating a lot of food and I'm getting the proper rest, I'm eating the proper food, I'm getting, you know, eight hours of sleep, I'm eating a lot of food, as a matter of fact, I'm eating the right food, so I'm getting plenty of protein and doing everything that I can right. And it's really hard for me to gain muscle mass, but when it comes to gaining strength, I find that it's something that um, comes more natural to me. I can, I can gain it quicker. And I have things that have happened to me that allows me to push myself and get myself in a zone to lift more weight. 
So in the video today, as I said, I warmed up, and then that's when I moved up to doing the deadlifts. And on my last set, uh, before my last set rather, I did 405 for one rep, and I felt that I could do a bit more that day. So I added the weight more weight in the end of it. I jumped up to 450 just to make it even. I usually like to do um, 25 or 50 pound jumps if I'm increasing from a certain weight. It just makes it easier as far as tracking how much I'm lifting. For example, if let's say, let's say for example, if I can't do 475 yet, and let's say right now I'm doing 405 for eight reps. Now what I'll do is I'll keep doing 405 and I'll keep doing that until it gets easy, until I'm able to do 12 reps or 16 reps. And once it gets that easy, then I'll make that 25 pound jump to where I'm able to do 475. Now if I'm able to do 475, for one rep then, the instead of doing 405, I'll jump up to 425, do that for six reps, see how it feels, and then keep moving forward from there. It makes it easier to track things because you have an, an uh, even number rather than having like an odd amount, like say 430 or um, 470 or something. I just find it easier and it, what well, works best for me, but I, I know not to make too big of a jump. You don't want to make you know, a 50 or 100 pound jump within you know a week or two. Um, a lot of times if you're a beginner lifter, you can make um, increases and improvements really fast, but then your body plateaus, and then you don't really gain as much strength as quick, because you, you get to a point to where your body um, is nearest the limit, and that every little bit you try to increase more than that takes more and more effort. And for me, I'm not quite sure what my absolute maximum is on anything right now at the moment, because I don't really have anybody to spot me on doing uh, bench press. Because the racks they have at the gym, it's shaped like a little hook like this. So when you're doing the set on bench press, you have to push up and then out a lot. And the way that it's set, I actually have to extend my arms in a position that prevents me from having my shoulders locked back and tightening my lats, which help me for when I'm bench pressing. If you don't have your lats engaged and everything in position, then... It's going to throw your bench off. And what I have to do a lot of times is where it's set, um, it's a little bit too high. But if I lower it, the increments are too big of a difference. Where if I lower it one more, um, it's down way too far. I'm doing an extra half a rep, which takes a lot of energy out. So what I usually do is, even though it's set to where it's a little bit too high, but if I go any lower, it's too low, I come out with it. And then while I'm there, I kind of put myself into position and get myself ready um, for the maximum rep or um, if I'm doing this set. But because I don't have someone spotting me, I kind of back off a little bit in what my maximum amount would be. And I want to play it safe and don't want to go too far. So for the deadlifts, I would say it'll be about six weeks and I will go for the 500 pound deadlift. And then after I get 500 pounds, um, I, what, what I want to do is try to do three times body weight deadlift. Right now I'm 170, so three times body weight would be 510 or 172. But I'll probably gain a few pounds over the course of the next six weeks. And then once I get there, I'll try to maintain my body weight at around um, a certain amount. And depending on how much strength I'm increasing, if I'm increasing strength a lot, then I'll just continue adding on the weight. Because I notice that for me, as I gain weight, let's say I gain five pounds of muscle, my deadlift goes up pretty much 75 pounds and it's like every little bit of muscle I gain there's a huge increase in how much I'm able to lift for example between one the weight of being for me 175 compared to when I'm 185 there's about a 150 pound difference in how much I can deadlift and squat and my bench press is like 100 pounds more than when I'm 175 so if I'm ever able to get myself to where I can weigh up 200 pounds, I wonder how much it is that I would be able to deadlift, bench press, and squat. Now in this video, um, I only did the deadlifts, and then after that I did some uh, bent over rows. I did 225, and then I did uh, 185, and then 135. But because I did a really heavy deadlift, and um, I didn't want to be too sore, I wanted to be able to recover, I pyramided down on that to where I started with a heavy set, and then lighter after that. And I like to do barbell rows. It strengthens my back and the position that I'm in when I'm doing deadlifts. And another thing I wanted to say is that 
for me, in, in a way, it's like when it comes to lifting, powerlifting, um, bodybuilding, and all these athletic things, it's like you're sculpting your body because you have to think of your body as a sculpture. You're, you're shaping and forming it into something that you want to work on, something that you want to improve upon. And whatever your goal is that you're going forward to and that you're trying to push yourself to reach, I kind of imagine that you have a piece of clay and you're just taking your body how it is and you're trying to shape it into um, what you want it to be. And I kind of find it in a way to be an art form. Now, if you have any questions about uh, the video, if you have any tips on what I could do to improve the deadlift, as you can see in the video, my um, hips are a little bit higher than normal. And that's because for me, because of my knee injury, um, I have a trouble, a hard time getting really low when I'm doing um, squats or deadlifts. And so um, what I do is I start a little bit higher and I use a little bit more of my back and my traps with have really strong traps. And so I'm able to um, get into position and use my hamstrings more and take a bit more of the pressure off of my knee and put on the um, rest of my body to help me for the lift. Um, I, I notice a huge difference between if I'm trying to do deadlifts really low versus if I have my hips up a little bit higher. I find it a lot easier. I can get up to the floor a lot easier and the lifts just go better and I'm not as sore the next day. So if you have any tips on what I can improve with it, I'll go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. But I'll try to upload some more videos of me lifting, um, doing squats, bench press for deadlift. But most likely they'll just be videos of me doing deadlift and squat because I don't really have anybody to uh, spot me for bench press, but I'll try to get a couple of them in. So go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments below if there's um, any questions you have. Or in general, if you have any questions about art or something you'd like me to draw, go ahead and let me know and I'll go ahead and get started on that. But for now, I'm going to go do some drawing and I don't know if I should pick the Roaching Isograph or the Lamy Safari. Go ahead and tell me which one you should think I should uh, go do a doodle with. Intricate doodles with a fine nib or some uh, nice smooth lines with the uh, Lamy Safari. But uh, both these pens I really love. I can't really decide. So you can pick for me. And uh, I'll go to start a drawing then. But until then, you have a good day. And I'll see you later.